think so. Oh, I need to get my apron on. One second. Okay. Hope that doesn't mean we are going to lose a lot of viewers in the first 30 seconds there, but I don't want to splash on myself. Okay, so it's Thursday and just nobody's come into the shop for like three hours. So I figured I would do my project, my homework here that I need to do today, which is um, a giant stack. Here's half of it of 112 napkins, batik cloth napkins that I'm gonna do for the folk school, um, for the John C. Campbell Folk School's craft shop. So I figured I would do this um, live and let people watch me and ask questions. Um, I'm pretty good at reading the screen from across here, so I'm going to, um, I'm just gonna batik for a while, man. I'm gonna, this is a totally cool type of batiking. I'm using these hand carved wood blocks from India and um, I'm gonna move my wax a little closer to me because I've got short arms. There we go, that's much more comfortable. Hello everybody. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be over here kind of far from the screen, but I can still read the text. Um, if you have questions or comments about what I'm doing, just throw them up there and hopefully I'll notice. Um, so right now, what I'm doing is I've got my little setup here. This is um, brown paper that uh, we had at a, on a big roll. Um, and this is beeswax over here, and this is my hand-carved wood block. I'm gonna wave back. Hello. <laughs> so I'm heating up my stamp right now. Um, I've got it in the, the beeswax, and the beeswax is just over 200 degrees. Um, hello back, Dolly's Eden Fabric, tuning in from Nigeria. Hi, what's up? This is why I love Instagram, because um, I can be batiking in North Carolina and talk to a fabric artist from Nigeria. Just super chill, <laughs> love that. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm warming this up, and what I'm waiting for is to, I'm waiting to melt the wax out um, of the wood. This is batik, or no, this is, this is um, teak. Burmese teak, hand carved in Gujarat. So let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a test stamp and see if it's if it's looking good. So I'm gonna flick. And I'll talk more about that in a second. Yeah, plenty hot. Okay. So I'm trying to remember exactly how I stamped these last time. It's been a few months, but I'm pretty sure I did just the four corners and one in the center. So okay, I'm gonna put this down for a second. Show you what I've done here. first one I did cooled more but look at that isn't that so cool um, that is the color of the beeswax on a cloth napkin we're doing 112 sets and what will happen is that I will dye this uh, napkin a bunch of different sets of these napkins a bunch of different colors and then wherever the wax is right now that's gonna be white after I boil it out. So this is the job. I'm doing a big old repetitive task. Um, and you know, these types of things are just way more fun when you have someone to talk to. So I'm gonna, I've got a little chair next to me here and I'm just gonna put the done ones down and then I'm gonna keep them in sets of four. I'm unhappy about how wrinkly this paper is right now. I want it to be smooth. Sometimes I stamp with paper underneath and sometimes I use a uh, campaign board. The upside to using campaign board is that you can scrape the wax off and recycle it. Um, but I've got all this, I've got all this brown paper and honestly this brown paper once it is waxy is like the best campfire starter ever. So I'm excited um, to use this as fire starter in the backyard for uh, campfires. <laughs> oh, my friend Sarah's here. Hi, Sarah. 
and still batiquing. Sarah and I knew each other from our early 20s when I was teaching batik at a summer camp and um, look, nothing's changed. <laughs> now I'm teaching for the internet. Okay, so my stamp is hot. I'm gonna dip, flick, stamp, dip, flick, stamp. And the, um, my heroes who practice this art in India can get all the extra wax off with one big flick, but I'm not that strong. So <laughs> I do several flicks. I'm gonna pull it off. There we go. Only 110 more to go. So yeah, um, if anyone has questions or comments about this work, how I'm doing it, what I'm doing it for, uh, oh my gosh, Jay Miles in the house. Hello, friend. Miss you already. Just doing some Indian woodblock batik. Um, these stamps, by the way, are hand carved by Anwar's um, uncle in the city of Mundra in Gujarat, India, which is like the westernmost city in the westernmost state of India, way, way out in the desert. And I was lucky enough to come back from my trip with 13 hand-carved wood blocks that um, he made just for me. And that is really awesome because it's something very special that I couldn't find, you know, anywhere else in the world unless I went and actually studied with the masters and hung out with their family for a couple weeks. And I was super lucky that they consented to carve some stamps for me to do my work with at home because I'm not a wood carver and I don't have time to learn how to be. So if anyone knows in your circle of friends how to carve designs into the end grain of wood, you're in luck. Get them to make you some and get them to make me some too. Uh, okay, so here's the first set of four napkins that I'm going to fold in half like this. First set done, 27 sets to go. But you know what? It's work and it's good work and it's fun. So in front of me here on the table, I've got a huge stack and we're just gonna work our way through them. Jay says, oh yes! Thank you Jay for wearing my work and thank you Rebecca for wearing my work. Y'all make me so happy. Cutie cuties looking cute in handmade clothing. It, you know, oops, where'd it go? Okay, there we go. Hopefully we're still live. My screen went black. Um, anyway, it just means the world to me when I have friends who, um, you know, purchase and buy handmade stuff, whether it's mine or another artist. It's just, I don't know. I, so I had a reel go viral um, <laughs> of, thank you, flower fibers says that she loves my shirt. This is actually, I'm wearing a kurta today. It goes all the way down. Um, super, super functional garment. Not traditionally worn over like pajama pants, but was feeling lazy this morning. Um, anyway, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so I made this reel the other day while I was pumping gas. I want the screen to stay on. And um, it went viral. It has over half a million views which is crazy because Instagram never pays attention to my reels. So no, no, I don't know what I did right with that one. It's rewarded me for something, for some reason. Anyway, it was about not seeing other artists in your field as competition instead of seeing them as, instead we choose to see them as our colleagues or our um, collaborators, our inspiration. I see there's like a few folks in my field watching right now who are also textile and fiber artists and yeah those are my people our real competitors are Amazon and you know made in China stuff that's really who we have to band together against so the point of that being I guess I need to plug this phone in um yeah the point of that being Thank you so much, everyone who chooses to spend your hard-earned money on handmade goods, which we can never price as low as factory-made goods. And it's just super, super important and essential that y'all do that. Um, so thank you, and I do it too. When I make money in my business, I pay my employees and we purchase 
handmade things from other artists in our region and it just the the circle of life and art continues to perpetuate itself thanks to regular everyday folks choosing to spend a little more on handmade so that's awesome i'm gonna do this one my screen keeps going black and i really don't want it to do that anyway um I think it just needs, I think the phone needs to be plugged in. So I'm gonna finish stamping this one. I'm gonna peel it off the paper and then I'm gonna go get the charger. So hopefully it will stop doing that. And I don't know, if you're watching right now, will you throw a little comment in the comment box just so I know that um, when the screen goes dark, it hasn't stopped my video. Is anybody out there? Can anyone make a, make a sign or leave an emoji so that I know this is working? Yes, okay, someone just joined so I know that it's working. Okay, set two down. I'm gonna go get the charger, one sec. Okay, this ought to do it. Let's see. Ba -ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Yay, all right, power. Maybe now the screen won't keep going black. Okay, set three. So I'm still working with this flower. I really like this flower. Um, this order of batik cloth napkins is for the John C. Campbell Folk School uh, craft shop. And they have specified what colors they want, but they haven't specified which stamp. So I get to choose, which is really fun. So uh, yeah, just I went to um, I went to the dentist at noon today to get two fillings, which is a bummer. One is a new cavity. Um, I stopped using fluoride toothpaste, and um, my dentist could tell right away because I usually don't get cavities, and this time I did. And one was to replace a cavity or a filling that I'd had for a long time. Ugh. Hi. <laughs> I don't know why my cell phone screen keeps going black. I guess I just have to touch it a lot. It'll keep me, it'll keep me focused on y'all. Um, but anyway, so my mouth has been numb for a couple hours and I couldn't actually make words, especially W sounds. So I had to put off going live for a little while. And I, um, I just, I haven't had a filling in so long. I didn't know what to expect. So I brought um, a salad with like crunchy veggies and some crackers for lunch and I couldn't bite down on any of it. It looked really hurt. So I called the dentist and I was like, is it supposed to hurt? And she's like, yeah, you just had your teeth drilled. But if it still hurts tomorrow, let us know. Um, so yeah, we'll see. Let's see. Hey, oh, Alex Stokes. Hi, friend. Got folks joining from the UK. Um, still batiking, my man. Alex is another friend that I knew from camp days back in the day. So here I am. So this summer is really cool. This summer marks 20 years of doing this work. I turned 40 this year and I was 20 when I started doing um, batik and tie-dye and candle making. And so literally half my life now has been spent doing this work. And I never saw that coming, but it's pretty exciting. Ugh. There's gotta be settings or something I can figure out to make the screen not go black, but it took me a while to get it set up up there, so I'm not, I'm not gonna mess with it right now. I'm just gonna touch the screen every once in a while. I'll just wave at people and that'll, that'll count as a, as a touch. So let's see, 28 sets of napkins and what could that divide evenly into? Four different stamp designs? That would be easy if I did four different ones. So seven sets with each design. Okay, that's what I've decided. I'm gonna do seven sets with each design. And this is three. So once I get four napkins, I put them together like that and I drop them off on the table over there. So four more sets to go with the flower. 
And then I'll probably do, I'm thinking, I'll probably do the Lotus next. I really like that one. It's a really nice size. The handle's really good. Um, it makes a really pretty stamp, obviously. I just really like this one. So that'll be next. We'll do, I've got four more sets to do with the flowers though. touch the screen so it doesn't go dark. Oh, Annie Bailey. Hi, Annie Bailey, my old friend. Annie's an incredible artist. Thank you so much for watching me do my textile art. So there we go. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the stamping. Um, you don't need to put it way down deep into the wax. I don't know if you can see in the corner here, but I just barely touch. It's like a kiss into the wax and then a strong flick to get all, you gotta make it rain. Do the strong flick down into the wax. And then peel, you wanna peel it off the brown paper before it cools while it's still warm and it can be released easily. And then I just set it off to the side. And sometimes you get little drips. Like look how pretty and evenly spaced those are. Total accident, but that's just amazing. Um, isn't that awesome? So that's okay, that'll be three little dots and to me, drips and splashes are part of batik, especially woodblock batik. You know, there's other batik artists who are very careful and meticulous um, and almost like painters with wax, but um, I'm definitely more of a stamper. Probably because I never felt like I was very good at 2D drawing. So instead of drawing much with my batik, I do a lot of stamping. It's so satisfying though. I mean, look at that. Aren't they beautiful? I just love, I love everything about that. I love how it looks. And I'm wondering, let's see if I can bring it. I'm gonna bring it a little closer and then readjust. This would be a terrible time to drop the phone in the wax, eh? Here we go. All right, cool. You can still see, there we go, perfect. All right, so at this point, the stamp itself is so hot from being in the wax for this long, you don't really need to put it in, like you don't need to reheat it in between sets of napkins or each individual napkin or like as I just stopped to readjust the phone, um, it will maintain heat, retain, it will retain heat. I'm already looking forward to switching to another stamp, but I have seven sets to do with this. Anybody got any questions about what I'm doing? Life, my dentist appointment, what I'm wearing, wax on, why nobody has come in for hours. <laughs> it's a really sunny Thursday, so hopefully people are out doing awesome things instead of retail shopping. There's also, there's no customs ready to pick up at this point. That's always fun on a day when like we've got some custom orders ready and I know someone will be walking in the door to get their order. Um, okay, that's set four. So let's just celebrate what we've done so far. Four sets of four napkins. We've got 24 napkins done and We've got 112 total. So that means we're not done yet. I was gonna try to do some math. What do y'all think? If I've got 112 napkins to do and I've, I've done 28, no, I've done 24. I am almost a quarter done with them, right? It doesn't matter. What matters is that they're all set out in front of me, looking good, and all I have to do is stamp. Ta-da! 
So if this is interesting to people, I'll do another video later where I dye these things. The only thing is there's tea towels that have to go with them and um, we didn't have quite as enough tea towels to fill this order so I had to order more. And so, and they also, we serge them with cotton thread because we're perfectionists <laughs> and um, snobs about threads being dyed to match. Like, I'm not trying to send stuff to the folk school that has polyester thread that doesn't take the dye. That's just not, that's not the caliber of the craft shop. So, anyway, so when we get our tea towels in, I hem them on the serger with cotton thread so that um, all the hems will match the body of the fabric. And so I can't dye these napkins yet because they won't, I like if for a dye bath, when you, every single time you make a dye bath, the color comes out a little differently. The shade comes out a little differently. And so I don't want to dye the napkins before I have the towels ready because then the dye lots won't match. Napkin, so pretty. <laughs> um, Anyway, what I'm trying to say to you is I don't get to dye these yet. I have to wait until the tea towels are here, which is fine. So we got a lot of other things to do. Right now I'm dyeing, um, oh my gosh, I forgot how many, but like a hundred and something hoodies for um, the Love Serve Remember Foundation, which is Ram Dass's foundation. They're a nonprofit and they're, they've got an office in Asheville. And I'm so grateful to be doing dying for them. Oh, thank you, Annie. Thank you for watching. <laughs> um, all right. Step five done. Step over here. Only two more sets to go with this stamp. Then we switch to another stamp. Um, but anyway, yeah, so there's, we've had a um, hundred and something hoodies making their way through the low water immersion dye baths, which for that much fabric, like hoodies are really thick and we have so many of them, we're doing the low water immersion dyeing in the washing machine in the back. So, and it has to sit for about 24 hours-ish. I, I can do like 20 hours on those, um, but in order for the dye, for the activated dye to really do its molecular color changing in the, you know, in the in the cotton fibers. They do need to sit for quite a while. So that also means um, I can't use the washing machine in between batches. Anyway, it's just this whole logistical thing. So like, we've got some ice dyes um, sitting in the hallway ready to be washed out, but I can't wash them out until we're done washing and dyeing and washing this next batch of hoodies. And that's batch three out of five for the hoodies. So what I'm saying is hand dyeing takes a while, especially on big, thick fabrics, especially when there's over a hundred of them. So I'm doing this other batch project, sort of one step at a time, while we wait for the washing machine to be available. It's really fun, you know, when I, when I first started the business um, five and a half years ago, I was definitely like out there hustling for every possible sale and every possible deal and every possible connection, just like, you know, you have to push the word out. Um, and now we've gotten to a point where like, folks find us, which is so amazing. I'm so grateful. It's so, it's so nice <laughs> to have people contact us and be like, do you do this kind of dyeing? And if so, what does it cost? And what's the process? And how do we get started? And that just, you know, it's thrilling. As a small business owner, it feels like I'm imagining being a parent and watching your child go out and sort of like navigate the world on its own. Um, like when you're sending your kid off to school or something, you're like, there they go. They're doing it on their own. I'm just gonna provide support now. So that's kind of where it feels like wax on is these days. Why do I have to touch the screen every 10 freaking seconds to make this thing stay? Like, is it the phone or is it the app? I just don't know. 
but the screen keeps going blank and the battery is fully charged and I have it plugged in so like what is up it's probably it's probably a setting is this one two three four five this is number six number six yay all right this is it this is the last one with this this is seven it up and then we're gonna switch to a new stamp and unfortunately like it or not this is where I'll probably have to stop the video so I can figure out what's happening with the settings unless there's like a pause button I don't know um, it's probably my phone settings it's probably really like oh anytime you're not um, touching the screen or using the screen we're gonna save the battery by making the screen go black but that's not what I want right now. I want to be able to leave the phone alone and just chatter at you while I do my work. Da 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 da. <sighs> and as you can see, the uh, the paper underneath my work is getting pretty pretty full of wax. It doesn't seem to be detrimental at this point. But, you know, what's really cool is uh, my friend Hanjala is here from Bhujpur. <laughs> and uh, that's where I learned how to do this. So that's really cool. Thanks for tuning in from India. I'm imagining it's really late at night there, Hanjala. What are you doing awake? Or wait, is it morning? Maybe it's morning there. I don't know. But right now it is. Afternoon in Asheville, almost one, almost four o'clock. And I'm starting to be able to feel my mouth a little better now. If you're just tuning in, I had some minor dental work today. I just had my mouth pried open for an hour and 15 minutes and two different teeth drilled into, one old filling removed and two new ones put in. Oh, mildly traumatic. Nothing too bad, but I just, I haven't, had, I have really good teeth usually and I haven't had to do anything like that in a long time in like 10 years so I didn't remember um, what it felt like to be numbed and drilled and held open and the scary thing was that um, for me the, the thing that makes me nervous is that I asked um, the dentist you know if I would be able to eat normally you know and like close my jaw and stuff and she was like oh yeah 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 no problem like you're you're numb but shouldn't be a problem but dude there's like a major sharp pain when I bit down on that side every time so um, really difficult eating lunch okay that's it that's set seven let me go grab the other pile and here we go one quarter of the work is done. How about that? Can you see them? The light's being really weird, but look at that. Yay. Oh, the light. Okay, there we go. Wonderful. All right, I'm going to stop the video now just so I can mess with the settings, but then maybe I'll come back on and uh, do some more. But thank you, everybody. Great to see y'all.